Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Dogboat333, and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, the New Order Last Days of Europe, as Omsk. Now, in the last video, the bombs from the German terrorists have stopped falling on from from our skies, and we are finally able to go on the road to war. So let's go ahead and do that. When the bombs ceased to fall, we celebrated twice. The first was for the end to a miserable existence in shelters and underground bunkers. No more do the people of Russia need to tremble and quail in terror at the sound of bombers far overhead. The second, though, was for the coming of another war, a war that will be rife with glory and horror alike. The war for all of Mother Russia. Our enemies at home trouble us no longer. They have been given new insights to our cause, and how far we are willing to go in the pursuit of vengeance. Such lessons will be imparted with equal measure to any who do not serve the motherland, beginning for old comrades to the north. Very nice. So we're going to have 21, 42, 63, 84 days before we go to war with uh, Tiumen. So till then, scavenge for some loot. We could purchase military access from the toast, which I don't think is going to be that necessary, honestly, so I don't bother. Cheetah's doing pretty damn well so far. Um, Irtus got all done, it looks like. But, other than that, um, Cheetah's got most of the pickups, it seems. <clears throat> the black uniformed ranks stood assembled before a tense pacing Azov. He saw the nervous energy in their eyes and fought to not meet it with his own, stealing himself forcing his mind back into the familiarity and certainty of the past. To the gauntlet, and now he had been decisive and strong. Like Karbyshev, he'd, do his just, he'd just do his speech and forget about the fear. <clears throat> Comrade soldiers, Yazov began using that familiar phase that Karbyshev had been so fond of. Today, by proving our strength, we prove our wariness. To rule Russia. Your deeds today will prove the fundamental nature of the universe. The strong rule and the weak perish. Your deeds will prove that we, the All Russian Black League, are the sole salvation of this nation in its millennium of civilization. So, through today, you may fight your countrymen. Fight as if you were facing down the fear himself. Because if we fail today, there is no tomorrow, and Russia will perish once and for all at the hands of its superpowers when the great trial comes. So go forth and carve your names into history. Yazov was satisfied with his delivery, and a cheer broke out. And now, the final personal touch that was uniquely his. Our cause is just, he shouted to further cheers giving voice once more to those words he had heard on the radio when it began in 1941. The enemy will be destroyed. Victory will be ours. The speech was over in what seemed like an instant. The words flung from him without comprehension. As his heart soared, basking in the soldier's cheer, as anxiety melted away for a moment, he wondered if this was how Karbyshev had felt before slipping into the unknown. Cry havoc, and let slip the dogs of war. Go ahead, get some more support. Very nice. Well, let's go ahead and sharpen the sword. Before embarking on the first steps towards reunification, our soldiers need to be adequately prepared. The rifle must be oiled, the grenade primed, the bayonets sharpened, and the will reinforced with the spine of iron. 
To falter at the first blow and never live to see the Great Jar will be a humiliating failure and a betrayal of our Founder's dreams. The cadres will be deployed to the field and begin to drill immediately. When the time to strike comes, they shall attack as a single, well-oiled machine, rather than the fanatical, barely-armed rabble our reputation suggests they are. Beautiful. Another 63 days before go time. Curious, can I check to see what these other guys are doing? It's a war of the unknown warriors. The government prevailed, Richard Nixon resigns. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like they got plenty of time. We got time to take them out, it looks like. Hmm. Now. All right, looks good to me. We could raid to human. I I won't bother with that, honestly. We have one loot. We might be able to get one more before this all ends. We have the Siberian Black Army prevailing against the PRC. Which I don't think I've ever seen do well, actually, the PRC. So it's Kemerovo versus the Black, the Black Army. Although I guess Oirotia has a sh slight shot. <clears throat> Light was just beginning to creep over the eastern horizon. Andre had been awake for several hours already, watching the border for any signs of movement. Behind him, the rest of his cadre was doing their morning drills, checking their weapons, and preparing for breakfast. Ahead of him stretched an endless grassland, disappearing into the darkness. About 50 meters out into that grassland was an invisible line, the line that separated the All-Russia Black League from the traitors and cowards that sought to undermine Russia. Borders were a fluid and often fanciful concept in Russia nowadays, but according to the map, they had... The line was out there, and they were not to cross it. Not yet, anyways. Technically, there were no plans for war with the Bolshevik scoundrels and Tiumen, and any talk of such was a rumor started by the men. Technically, Combat Cadre 154376, along with almost every other Combat Cadre in the League, had been moved to the border as part of a training exercise. The order to be combat ready at all times had nothing to do with the escalating border clashes between the League and the Communists of the North. Officially, everything was business as usual, but the simple fact that the Cadre commanders were was making no effort to silence talk among the ranks of an invasion was proof enough for everyone. War was coming. Staring out into the pre-dawn darkness, Andre couldn't help but be excited. He didn't know. He knew that he shouldn't be. After all, it was his fellow Russians he would be going into battle against, but he had trained for war since he was 14 years old. He would finally be able to serve his purpose for the League and Avenger of the Motherland. He did not want to fight for glory. Out there in the darkness, about 50 meters away, lay something far greater than glory. Redemption was waiting for him. A line will be crossed. We have sharpened the sword, now it's ready the shield. We do not, as ye of yet, possess a sizable army. Our enemies can draw upon a much larger reserve of manpower and retain the bulk of the old West Siberian military. Though the Glakovarik has faith in the offensive spirit of our cadres, a single misstep could see them take more casualties than we can afford to replace. Shoring up our existing defenses will alleviate the damage for such, from such an occurrence. Defense is always easier than attack. It will also open up the possibility of using attritional warfare to whittle down the superior numbers of our enemies, in the event that they should bring the fight to us. Let's ready that fucking shield, boys. Alright, yep, Samar versus Tatarstan. 
The Aryan Brotherhood. I saw they got a little cut by right here, and they lost uh, a Hitlerheim. I, I guess that's what they call it now. But, um... They took out the Bashkirs. So that's, you know, interesting. We'll see what happens there. Usulosk is winning. They're depending on the moderates right now, it seems. I was about to say, if they, if they go fucking tabby here, that would be insane. Who is winning? It's Borman versus Goring. I ho hope it is not Goring. Just because that's going to go ahead and complicate my... Uh... Oh, there goes Kennedy. Because that'll go ahead and complicate matters. I'd rather, you know, bring the Great Trial on my own sort of uh, terms. We've readied the shield. Now let's go ahead and start up Warpran... War plan to Garin. Once, the Soviet Union appeared to the west as a terrifying dragon out of myth, a great winged serpent that darkened Europe with a shadow of its wings and threatened to incinerate all that stood before it. Then the Germans came, driving the beast from its lair and claiming its riches for themselves. Its sole attempt to reclaim its home failed, and now the dragon of communism is a sickly old lizard, just waiting for someone to put it out of its misery. The Black League is a questing hero, and its cadre is a dragon slaying sword clenched in a mailed fist. To the north dwell some of the last defenders of that failed ideology, Kaganovic and an assorted crew of old war dogs and career politicians. Their time is past and their cause lost. We shall enlighten them to that fact. Very well. Since the collapse of the Union, Omsk has always been a heavily fortified city. The bunkers and tunnels first built by the West Siberian People's Republic were the only foundation for the massive network of fortifications and redoubts constructed on the orders of Karbyshev. The paranoia of the Black League has taken physical form. The lines of fortified gun placements, trenches, and minefields stretch from the borders of a league all the way back to its heart in Omsk. The very landscape of Western Siberia has been weaponized against all outside intrusion. As Kovrachev's influence weakened, the squabbling generals of the old guard grew, grew lax in their maintenance of these mighty fortifications. They only cared for the defenses that protected their personal holdings, thinking exclusively of themselves and not of Russia's needs. Only when Yazov vanquished for traitors did he realize what sorry state the defenses were in. He had reunified the League in its territory, and now he had consolidated his control. He would not lose it to an outside invasion. As the League prepares for war, every step has been taken to make sure the home front is ready. The last trials taught the Russian people that they must expect the war to come to them. And under the Black League's guidance, they will be ready if it does. The League has conscripted everyone within its borders to restore their fortifications in and around Omsk. Trenches are deepened and reinforced. Our bunkers are cleaned out and refitted. Anti-air crew repositioned their guns towards the border to counter an aerial opponent. As Russia's reclamation draws near the anticipation and Omsk is palpable, the last weeks of preparation will decide Russia's fate. Yazov and the rest of the Black League refuse to cede a single inch of Russian soil to the enemy uncontested. The Black League must not fail until justice has been done. And I'll do my damnedest to make sure that happens. That, you know, we don't fa fall. Just probably clarify a bit on that. Siberia versus the fleet. Samara's doing pretty well so far. Otter Bravery, it looks like they're doing the Voice of Reason. Zikov, not a bad way to go, actually. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, not too bad. Uh, I'm used to the Bunyachenko path. I haven't played anything else in tomorrow. I kind of know, like, tentatively what the others are. Not tentatively, I know, I kind of know pretty well. All right, here we are. War plan to Garin. Let's slow things down a little bit. Let's see if they want to come into us. So far, no. So, we'll move up here. We got a doctrine done. Get some artillery barrage go. Ooh. Report to redacted from redacted. Date and time unknown. Interaction diplomatic exchange. A caravan of Unknown amount of trucks arrived from the premises of unknown camp yesterday, carrying with it unknown crates of Kalashnikovs and other weapons. Unknown amount of caches with helmets, vests, combat rations, and a pen to see attached were also handed over as complimentary gifts. This was just in time, too, as commas are unknown. Reported a lack of supplies on the front. P.S. Sir, the ma firearms manufactured in Zlatost are superior to most of our current equipment. Aside from better technology, the soldiers say the weapons are less prone to jamming and fewer of the grenades or duds. The direction quality indicates machine factories. With your permission, sir, I wish to contact the merchants again and negotiate more contracts. These weapons can help us win war. Well, their help is appreciated. That is quite nice of the toast. We'll see what this guy ends up doing. Can I just see? Let's, I want to see if I can get working on maybe encircling that guy. Probably pin this guy down. See how well that goes. Yeah, pin him down, and then attack over the river. Not the best, but not the worst in this case, because it's not going to take too long. You stay there, you help out there now. And you stay here for now, I think. Yeah. We'll actually send you there. I'm not really too concerned. I just want to try to get here before these guys do. Which looks like we've managed to do so. We got a pretty decent swab of territory going right now, which I'm happy about. Oh, Kimarova one, okay. This is neat. I don't think I've seen them get past the stage before, which is interesting. Is Latos can send volunteers now? Hmm. Earlier today, six companies were deployed to unknown, courtesy of Zlatosk. The men participated in a brief skirmish on the border, inflicting disproportionate casualties on hostile forces. When questioned, the mercenaries confirmed to have been organized in Zlatosk itself, trained with the help of, our, of modern doctrines developed by the merchants. One of the commissars noted, The soldiers displayed discipline in the face of mortal at adversity, execute orders without question, and risk their lives in the service of this, our state. They acted more like professional soldiers than mere mercenaries. As agreed to, Zlatos has received our payment, but their head merchant also claims that more business opportunities await us. The Mountain Republic has many more troops, which will be invaluable in turning the tide of the war. Well, their help is appreciated. Ooh, we can signal the infiltrators. I know, I'm, I'm trying to save up political power, but I want to do that just to see what exactly that is. 
That'll be interesting. Now, we have a fair bit of political power saved up. I, I don't know how much more we'll need. Sorry, messaging my uh, friend about something. Let me see the casualties. 6K versus 300 and up 436, I was about to say. I'm still doing pretty damn well, all things considered, even that slight increase in casualties. Signal the infiltrators. We'll see what happens with this. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that is nice. That is really interesting. I think we'll be able to take uh, advantage of some of this chaos. Well, 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 how the turntables. We'll go ahead, get some... I'm thinking anti-tank. Who is messaging me at this late an hour on Discord? What a curious thing. Ooh. Yeah, it's just that guy. Here's a, I think this is a tip I learned. Give him your own give him your own general. Not too bad defense wise. You for whatever reason. Having you do that made you weaker. I don't know how that works. Okay, there we go. We got this guy freed up, so he he won't die immediately. You do that. Oh, we got our new elite units. Send them in. Try to get a bit of encirclement off here. Well, this guy go through. And yeah, you. Actually, this actually doesn't hurt us that badly, if anything. It is a bit of an inconvenience. Hmm. Okay, so this guy might die, actually. You... Hold out for now, buddy. You go that way. Right, one guy retreating down. And that might encircle him. I'll have him fight there. No, to human is its own, has its own connector tile. So that'll complicate things a bit. But I'll te move into Ishim. 
see how well that works for us. I think I'll move you. Are they about to move out of their capital? That's a bold strategy, Cotton. We'll see if that works out. Yeah, we'll put you guys in the army too. Probably upgrade them as... We're about to take their capital. And we didn't even need to do that much. 5k versus 13k. I mean, any losses at this stage aren't good, but... I'm okay with this. We'll actually train a few new recruits. Get a little bit extra manpower. Industrial. What needs improvement quickly? Our industrialization is going pretty well. Agriculture? Maybe research facilities. Yeah, we'll do research facilities. Oh! Our soldiers have seized Lenin's mausoleum. Oh, snap. Due to a lack of strategic or tactical significance to Lenin's corpse, the troops of our opponents abandoned his body without a fight, choosing instead to retreat to a safer, more defensible position. Political significance of Lenin's body remains questionable across Russia. Views over Lenin's historical figure are wide range and varied. Many people view Lenin is the father of political movement, which has, through its stupidity and confidence, led to the collapse of our nation. Others see Lenin as a bastion of a former communism, true to Marx and Engels, the legacy of which would be betrayed by Zerbukharin. Others see Lenin as the first in line of a successor of troubled yet still utopian Bukharinist leaders and thinkers. Whatever the thoughts of the man, he's most certainly one of the most prominent leaders in Russian history. And now he's in our grasp. Hoo hoo. So we can just leave him be. Apparently. Bury him quietly. Evidently we can't destroy his body, which is interesting. We'll just bury him quietly. Get rid of it, some of that authoritarian socialist support. And how close are we collapsing them now? Not too far ahead, or not too far away. Let's try to move into Chelya Binks real quick. Unpause, that's probably a good idea if I want to do this in a timely manner. Yeah, the authoritarian socialism support is not 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 notable enough for me to worry. You don't do that. And honestly, we might just... Actually, taking Kurgan might do it. I'm not too sure. If not, it's a good idea we're moving into Chili Binks now. So we don't have to worry about it later. How the casual are doing? 5k versus 29k. Oh yeah, we're doing great. I'm not worried at all. Uh, is it enough? Not quite. Okay, so here's what we'll do. We'll move you there. Just get that done with. Do one last offensive movement with one of Asalias. We'll still send you there, but the rest... Get pushing, boys. We'll get something on the other side of the river. Free military factories. Some more guns will be good. More guns are always good. I mean, as an American, I can vouch that. That, that, that may as well be our national motto at this standpoint. More guns are always better. Moving into Chelyabinsk. Onwards, countrymen. So we'll go ahead, integrate to human. Only going to take 85 days. Not too bad. Move all of our guys on the the um, front, the uh, Sverdlovsk front. The 
think first let's go ahead and do... We'll uh, expand the underground first. The Dragon's New Lair, carved out on Kaganovic's ruins, orders, run deep beneath the cities taken by our cadres. Not to to our own, the communists apparently built this vast underground network of tunnels and bunkers to mitigate the effects of German bombings on their industry. In this, they would appear that they were somewhat successful. It seems even communists know what good ideas when they see them. Now that the tunnels are underground and underground facilities are under our control, we shall continue what their old owners began and dig even deeper. When the great trial comes, all the people of Russia will need all the security we can give them. We will not reject anything that furthers Russia's odds of survival. So some more building slots, two off-map civilian factories, beautiful. Beautiful already, I, I can tell you that. We'll do an offensive line. Tokyo games have come to an end. Kingdom of England is up to its nonsense. You got Rab Butler. I didn't realize it was a was a thing. Oh no. Please no. Please tell me this isn't going to happen. <sighs> We're spanning the underground. So we have two options. We can have a pure league or we can have them take the black. Now as a former Game of Thrones fan, this one interests me, so I want to take a look at this. The motherland always needs more defenders. Despite their failings, the men who serve Kaganovic remain skilled, command skilled commanders. He proved himself an unworthy leader, but Yazov has inherited the prestige oh, uh, and pride of a legendary Karbyshev. Who better man to follow in these dire times? The man of Kaganovic's clique, at least those we have judged worthy, would accept the black mantle of the cadres, then they shall have it. With it comes a chance for redemption, whether that be in victory or death. As communists, they do not deserve such mercy. But as Russians, they still hold some worth in the Mullerland's eyes. Perhaps they will yet find enough valor in their hearts to be forgiven for their past weakness. I think that's fair. Why not? Yeah, let's have him take the black. We could raid Central Siberia. I don't know how that good, how much finite a good idea that is, but we could. More manpower, beautiful. Let's get back to speed five. <clears throat> Internal security director report. Status, traitor sign. Note, all personnel of class five seen below are forbidden to access below information. Disobedience is death. Summary, liquidation of dissident political elements, former, former titles, Lazar Kaganovic, Nikita Khrushchev, Vyacheslav Molotov, Mikhail Kaganovic. Wave 1 complete with minimal losses of time and manpower. Abstract. Political element Kaganovic reported to the podium at 0715 hours, 5 minutes ahead of schedule. Formal trial proceedings documented in full within Report Addendum 1A for access of Class 7A personnel and above only. Elements was permit Element was permitted brief speech acting in his own defense. Charge of political interference approved with no obje objections. Transcript of speech as follows. Damn you. Damn you all. I know you're in there somewhere, Yazov. How? Why? I saw what you were doing, what you did, to the city my people built. I saw the vans. I saw my people march into prisons and never come out. 
What monster would do this? To send the jackal on his own people. Ellen was taken to custody after being rendered incapable of speaking. Acting judge redacted, approved extraordinary recess following speech. Recognized possible mental stress of Element Kaganovic as a reason for his hypocritical statements, and agreed to grant clemency to political elements afterwards. All Wave 1 candidates were barred to, from speaking to prevent themselves from further embarrassments, and convictions and sentencing proceeded ahead of schedule. Median time to liquidation, 5.35 minutes. Silly boys. Ooh, I'm curious what'll happen here. I mean, it's the AI, so I don't know if I have much faith in them to do it. Uh-oh! Um... Fuck, that's not good. I... I'm pretty sure they, there was something in the patch that made the that was supposed to stop that from happening, because you know Gorn can actually do stuff now. But yeah, okay. Oleg Losik was pacing the floor of his cell. The only sound to interrupt his thoughts was the occasional scream emanating from God knows where deep or within the prison complex. It had been weeks since the surrender of the last forces of the West Siberian People's Republic. He still couldn't believe they had lost. By all accounts, it should have been taken a few months to wipe out Yozov's treacherous cult. And as soon as the Black League crossed, they forced the armies of the Republic further and further back until the day came when he had emerged from his command post with his hands over his head and several League soldiers forced him into the back of a truck bound towards Omsk. He had braced himself for execution, but it never came. After being processed, the guards placed him in a cell where he was now and left him to rot. Aside from guard who brought him his daily meals, he hadn't seen anyone in weeks. He heard the door to the cell hallway open outside his cell open. The echo of footsteps drew closer and closer. A lug's heart began to hammer in his chest. Perhaps the waiting was finally over, and they had come to finish him off. An officer of the Black League came to a stop outside the door, locking eyes with him. Oleg Losik, the officer said. It was not a question. Yes. Oleg replied, doing his best impression of bravery. The officer drew an envelope from his pocket. This letter is from Field Marshal Yazov. He addressed it specifically for you. You will have your response ready by this time tomorrow. He tossed it through the bars and departed the way he came. Oleg tore the envelope open and removed the letter inside. His eyes devoured the contents. Betrayal, betrayal of the Russian nation, obeying traitorous superiors, displayed talent and bravery in the field. He reread the last line to make sure his eyes didn't deceive him. You will have a chance at redemption through service to Russia and the Black League. The League is a home to all royal, loyal Russians. So we'll integrate some of the team and general staff into our ranks. And we'll go ahead and get Oleg Losik and Sergei Shitemenko into our armies. Losik is a pretty good panzer leader, actually. And who was we ever? This one, right. Artillery attack, not too bad, actually. Can we compare it to our guy? About comparable. Yeah, these guys are just about comparable. Like, you know, they're exactly the same as this. I'm thinking we might be able to get infantry leader if we keep working him. So, we'll go with Sher Sergei Shichmenko. And try to see if we can't get him a little bit of progress.
It's always worth it. It's worth a shot, at least. Let's go ahead and do a na national focus. Looks like we're going after Sverdlovsk. Beyond the Reds stand the line of Siberia, Konstantin Rokossovsky, and his pet military junta. He fancies himself a benevolent dictator, a brave knight who watches over the people of Sverdlovsk, offering protection in exchange for service. <laughs> what a farce. He is a mere general playing as ki at kingship. We shall put an end to his pathetic fantasies and show his subjects the true path. Rokossovsky's army will be a tough obstacle to overcome, but they are not invincible. Their main strength lies with their leadership. The common soldiers fight mostly for themselves, and their morale will crumble once the futility of their struggle becomes apparent. There we go. We could scavenge for some loot. I think I will do that. We can maybe get one more upgrade in by the time we're done with all this. Maybe improve the schools. <sighs> Margaret Thatcher's fucking prime minister again. Let's hope she fucking botches the invasion of Cornwall and fucking Montgomery coups her. German invention in Africa. Okay. Hmm. Stalemate. Yeah, I can think of plenty worse. Scenarios in the still than a stalemate. In fact, I think we're about to see the worst scenario coming up. But we'll deal with that when the time comes. Um, do these guys want to attack into us, or should we attack into them? Oh, okay. Yeah, Usa. Okay. Fiatica might actually have a decent shot here. I guess we'll do some pushes then. Stalucker. Let's move in and take their capital. Oh god. Oh. That was painfully quick. Wow, that was underwhelming, I dare say. Well, let's integrate them. God, really? Well... Yeah, I was hoping that would take longer, shit. Hmm. Let's study their methods. Sometimes good quantities endure in a man regardless of his incorrect allegiance. Rokossovsky's officers embody this fact. Despite their weak moral fiber, they've taken after their late master in the fields of strategy and tactics. There is much that our own officers can learn here, even if such knowledge needs to be just a little to suit our doctrine. We shall go digging through archives, through Rokossovsky's own writings, and see what there is what what there is to find. The captured officers have been fairly uncooperative so far, but we might learn at least something by putting the screws to them before they expire. Anything that can hone the motherland sword is most welcome, after all. More factories, I'm thinking anything we need to build. I say we get work on more casts. That'll be good. Okay, actually, uh, Ustatovsk is hanging in there. Oh, did they actually partition the Levant successfully? Okay. Yeah, there's Palestine. You got Jordan. Studying their methods. What? We got, um, you have Jerusalem right here. Man. Well done, Italian AI.
You guys did good. Oh, we got Lebanon. <laughs> ah, peace in the Middle East. Who would have fucking thought? And Italy even gets Sinai. How nice. Anyway. I'll read this one event, and then we gotta cut it here. <sighs> Identifier, BP, OSA, B7R. Composer, HGW, XS7. Classification, 5C+. Concerning, DPE, 67K. Rokosovsky, Konstantin Kostan Konstantinovic. Background, distant political element, 67K, apprehended subsequent to the occupation of SL-22A, Sverdlovsk, following total collapse of Ural military district capability. 67K, subjected to a level 3F interrogation in pursuit of actionable intelligence on additional distant elements. Record, 67K, 3FA attached. Following interrogation, 67K, identified as requiring immediate, immediate processing. Summary, 67K, brought before Combined Tribunal, 445F8. Counsel provided, trial duration, 17 minutes, 22 seconds, transcript, transcript, 445F8A attached, sentence, death. No final statement from 67K, likely owing to after effect of interrogation, immediate s execution of sentence, remains disposed as of, as per protocol, B564P. Addendum. Dissident elements 68K. Batov Pavel Ivanovic not apprehended upon occupation of SL 22A. 68K suspected to have evaded capture alongside other dissident elements. Further insurgency considered possible. Report ends. Final section FEAF 156. Access restricted. Well, I'm sure that's not going to be uh, called into anything, you know, in the future. So we're going to have to go here, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching, however. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you want to see more of this content in the future, go ahead and hit the sub button for my uploads every weekday, as well as every Saturday. If you have any comments, feedback, concerns, anything of sort, leave in the comment section below. I read all the comments. Again, appreciate any all feedback you might have from me. Excuse me. Um, if you want, um... If you want to send a few bucks my way of a Patreon, if you want to chat or play games on Discord, if you want to uh, see me do a sort of live, I have a Twitch, all which are down in the description box below. That's really about it for now, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you as always for watching, however. If you like this video, uh, why, why am I, why did I start the outro again? I need to finish it. I'm, I'm tired. What am I doing? Thanks as always for watching, ladies and gentlemen. My name has been Dogbot333, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.